There it is. Hi, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody, uh, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Brandon Tancott, and it's an honor and a privilege to be with you uh, to host another one of our monthly Demartini webinars. Demartini is standing by uh, to join us in a few seconds. Uh, before we get started, we'd just like to welcome a few of the attendees into the room uh, and give an opportunity for everyone to, to get in, to get their pen and paper, and to get ready. So you'll see to the right-hand side of the window is a little chat chat box. Um, I see Mark has already posted a comment. If you could just let us know where you're from. Uh, we're always interested in to find out where people are from in the world so we can get an idea of who we're talking to this evening. Thank you. I see Stephen from New Zealand. Hi, Stephen. Um, we've got a few other people joining us in the room. Just to the right, you'll see a chat box there. You can just put in your name and say hi to Dr. Demartini and let us know where you are in the world. Wow, now they're streaming and we've got, geez, so fast I can't even read. We've got uh, Rick from London. We've got Samantha from uh, Ireland. We've got, actually I can't read them. That's how fast they're going. We've got a full house tonight. Elizabeth from Chicago, Samantha from London, Christine from Romania, Keith from Vermont, Anna from... Uh, hola, Daniel from Romania, a few places that I don't even know of and I didn't even know existed, which is always a good thing. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Um, great. So what we'll be doing today is the, the topic for today is the mind-body connection. So there's a reason why health and the wellness industry continues to grow exponentially every year. So many of us spend decades ignoring what our bodies are trying to tell us and end up spending a lot of money trying to regain our health. Dr. Di Martini has spent 40 years studying the mind-body connection and how our perceptions and beliefs impact our bodies on a cellular and genetic level. So therefore, it's a profound impact on health and disease. During this powerful mind-body webinar, we're going to be looking at the perceptions and beliefs that impact your energy, vitality, mental clarity, and wellness. So if you're strugg struggling with various health issues at the moment, or if you're struggling to regain balance in your mind and body, or if you're looking at ways to defy the aging process, which I'm sure we all are, uh, and to rebuild your body's health, then this, this webinar is for you. So stay tuned. Uh, as I said, Dr. John Demartini is going to be joining us in a few seconds, but I'd like to just run you through the logistics of the webinar. The webinar will be running for about an hour and 20 minutes. We'll be doing a, a Q&A of 20 minutes at the end of the webinar, so stay tuned for that. We'll be, uh, I'll be reading the, your questions directly to John, so you'll have a one-on-one -on -one interface with him for him to be able to answer your, your questions. We normally get quite, uh, through quite a few of those questions, so please stay tuned for that at the end. Right. Also, just to be upfront with you, we are going to be doing a sale at the end of the webinar. A fantastic offer on uh, Dr. Demartini's breakthrough experience. Of course, it's not a compulsory course, but we do respect your time and we know and we would like to tell you upfront that there will be a, an offer at the end of this webinar. So look out for that offer. We'll make it clear for you when you can jump onto that. Fantastic. So as it's a, it's sounds like a very long webinar, but we're going to be compacting quite a lot of information into the next hour. So please get your pen and paper, make sure you take notes and, and get ready. So the format for the webinar, you'll see the chat as we get started, we'll actually be closing down the chat uh, and reopening it for the Q&A at the end of the webinar. So if the chat disappears, don't worry, we will be opening it up a little bit later. So just hold your comments for that. Right. So before we get started, um, I'd just like to introduce who our speaker is, Dr. Di Martini, uh, who's considered one of the world's leading authorities of the Dr. Di Martini Institute, a private research and education organization. He's done over 72 courses, uh, over 44 years of cross-disciplinary research and study, has been incorporated into, into all his human development industries across the world. Uh, John travels 360 days a year to countries all over the globe um, and has published over 40 books in 29 different languages. He's also produced 60 CDs and DVDs covering subjects such as developments and relationships, wealth, education, and business. Each of his programs is designed to assist people to activate leadership and empower. John, welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us this evening. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> looking forward to it and doing great. 
<laughs> Fantastic. I've been looking forward to this one personally. Um, as health is one of my highest values, I've gone through a lot of challenges in my own personal life with health. It was actually the reason I started, uh, became an entrepreneur. I went through a, a period when I was about 21 years old and I had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, after going through an ordeal of chemotherapy and all the wonderful things that they throw at you, eventually got to a point where I realized and I was cured. What do I want to do with my life? And that's actually when I started becoming an entrepreneur. So this this talk really uh, is one I'm excited for, and it's a privilege for me to to be able to host you, John, on this uh, webinar. So that being said, we're going to jump in. The format for the webinar is uh, a Q and A. So we've got a few uh, wonderful questions here that the Demartini uh, Institute has prepared for us, John. So I'm going to jump right in uh, and ask these questions to you. We we ready to go? All right, perfect. Fantastic. So I think the first place to start, John, is to explain the background of how you came to the point in your life where um, you started to teaching people about the mind-body connection. Well, first, I had uh, a void in the area of health and well-being. I was living in Hawaii, Oahu, when I was 17. I ended up um, having strychnine cyanide poisoning and nearly died. And that, of course, created a void because it had damaged my nervous system and muscular system. And that put me on a quest to try to figure out what to do with that. And I then had the opportunity to work and live at a you Seekers Horizon health food system, which is before Whole Foods came about. This was like the biggest health food system in America. And um, they had a giant library where there was nothing but health books. And I just devoured these trying to learn about things for myself and also because I wanted to be involved in healing arts. And then I um, went on to professional school, pre-med in college, and uh, studied physiology, anatomy, and things of this nature, and went on to professional school as a chiropractor. And all the way through, as I was reading the textbooks, uh, it would occasionally come across a tech, uh, you know, an, an a health condition that said etiology unknown. We don't know the cause. We don't know the reason for it. And those were the ones that fascinated me. The ones that I that they knew what was causing it, that was interesting. But it was more interesting on the ones, well, what's the cause of that? What's, what's initiating that? And so I had a curiosity and I had a belief that there was a relationship between our mind and body from way back because I could see various people uh, who had health conditions had certain psychological correlations and um, so I, I was pursuing that. I, I wanted to understand the psychology, the mind-body. I wanted to know how the brain affected physiology. I studied all the transmitters, all the modulators and hormones and, and how perceptions affected ratios of them. I remember reading about hormones in the brain and writing uh, dissertations on this. And then when I got into practice in 1982, I started documenting the cases that I had and asking questions that very few people seem to be asking. The correlation between, you know, what was going on in the stresses and the level, what's your perceptions, what's going on. And um, I started documenting them. I started making notes of them. I started looking at different conditions. I even looked at some genetic conditions that were supposedly congenital anomalies. And I started looking at the embryological development and looking at when those congenital anomalies might have occurred and looking at the development of the, the uh, fetus and uh, trying to go back and asking the parents what happened at this week of development. And I found amazing correlations. And I had started documenting that and I printed out a, uh, an ongoing, as I was gathering data, I printed out an ongoing system that many years ago, uh, God, 35 years ago or so, I started correlating these. And about 30 years ago, I gave a list of it to, uh, to a number of people in the field, including a lovely woman named Louise Hay. And, uh, Anyway, I started giving out this information and, and using it in my clinical practice and training my doctors on it. And now I've more recently, I've published a, about a thousand page textbook on the health conditions uh, and the psychology and physiology and neurology and endocrinology relationship. And um, I teach a course on that now, a more advanced course, but I teach that course. So I've been fascinated by this 44 years, going on 45 years. I've been um, doing everything I can to, to make a connection between them because I really, truly believe that the power inside us is what heals. You know, we, we, we've been living in a era where we want to blame things on the outside. We, we were in the germ theory 
And we want to blame germs. We want to blame things on the outside, toxicities and things. And therefore, we want a solution from the outside. But I was a believer that we had um, the cause and effect was actually inside us. I always said that no therapy is ever complete till it cause equals effect in space time. So I'm more interested in what goes on. I want to give people their power back. I want to help them be accountable. I want them to realize that they have amazing things they can do to change their life. And um, not that the others don't have a place, um, except that I just don't think that's the case. I, when I first started doing it, the germ theory ruled. And today it's, it's, it's dying out. The germ theory is being turned into um, microbiome ecology and management of microbiomes. And they're now realizing that our immune system is not here to attack uh, bugs, germs, viruses, bacteria, as much as it is to keep them in check because we depend on those in our physiology. And that's where our psychology is actually governing the immune system to help do that. And that's, I, I want to share that tonight. That's one of the things I want to share. So I've been, I, I, this has been a, a very inspiring topic for me from, from the time I was 17. Wow. And th that's amazing. And, you know, for myself, you know, when I had the cancer, as I mentioned earlier, you know, and I went to the doctors and at, at the age of 21, you hit a sort of a crisis mode where you go, well, how did, how did this happen? What caused this? And uh, basically they said, well, it happens. And I said, well, what do you mean it happens? It, it, no, it, it happens. And I had to accept that answer for many years. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, I wonder sometimes how quick, much quicker I would have been able to heal if I had known how, uh, which leads into our next question, how you can make sense of the, the thoughts um, and how your thought impact your body and ultimately your, your health or the nature of your, your diseases. Well, before I answer that, I want to share something. When I was 24, I... Um, became un unexpectedly president of the Cancer Prevention Control Association in the city of Houston. I was attending lectures on cancer at this conference and they, they somehow they wanted me to be involved in it and I got involved and they asked me to be president of it, which was a very, ex it was a great catalyst for me. It allowed me to speak at a very prestigious conference on oncology. And so I was very, very, very inspired by the idea of of seeing the relationship between our psychology and even cancer. And there are, there you have two camps. You got some that believe that's possible and others that completely ignore the, the mind. They're, they're nothing to do with the mind. And I could tell a story, and I may tell a story today about that, that uh, there's no doubt in my mind that psychology is playing a role in that. And, that, and that's just, you have to be blind to not see it. So, uh, but but how it works, let me, let me explain some of this, uh, how I've seen it work. Every individual, lives by a set of priorities, a set of values, um, things that are most important to least important in our life. And whatever's highest on our value, we are spontaneously inspired to live and fulfill. And whatever's low on our values, we need motivation on the outside to get us to do it. We need punishment if we don't do it and reward if we do it to get them to do, to get us to do the lower priorities. But the things that are most important, we spontaneously inspired from within. We just, we just love doing it. Whenever things challenge our values, the highest values, we activate an area of the brain uh, and the, the nervous system that's called the sympathetic nervous system. And when something supports our values and our perceptions, because it's about perception, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system. These are the two divisions that are complementary opposite aspects of the nervous system that runs physiology and runs cell behavior. And um, so we literally, because of our values, we're filtering our reality and we're experiencing our reality accordingly. So if we perceive, and I'm going to keep emphasizing, it's all about perception, because an event, we've all had events in our life that we that we thought were challenging, and then weeks or days later, we found out, oh, thank God that occurred. That's a blessing. And we didn't see it initially. And we didn't, we realized that it was, we thought it was challenging, it turned out to be a blessing, or things we thought were really great, and we turned out to be, oh my God, I didn't see the downside of that. You know, when we're infatuated with somebody, we don't see the downsides. When we're resentful of things, we don't see the upsides, and it's our illusion actually because everything's got both sides so whenever we see one side without the other and we see challenge we activate the sympathetic we see support we activate the parasympathetic one is fight or flight responses and the other one is rest and digest responses and so what happens is this autonomic nervous system the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, these two systems are run our physiology run our cells every cell even immune circulating cells have receptors on them. And those receptors, which are made out of proteins and sugars, what they call glycoproteins, um, they, they are organized in very specific manners and they 
basically react to the transmitters, modulators, regulators, and hormones that are circulating through our blood and our and our extracellular fluid and our lymph and our cerebrospinal fluid. And basically it's those hormones are, the ratios of those hormones are changing according to perceptions. So let me give an example. If you're infatuated with somebody, your dopamine level goes up, your oxytocin level goes up. Dopamine because you're kind of addicted to it. Uh, oxytocin because you want to bond with it, trust it. Um, vasopressin because you want to bond with it. Enkephalins, endorphins because it's pleasurable. Uh, estrogen because it nurtures you. And um, serotonin because you start building a fantasy around it. So those t those those particular transmitters and hormones go up the moment we perceive something that supports our values if we're infatuated. On the other hand, when we get resentful to something or something really challenges us, we get testosterone, we get histamine, we get cortisol, we get norepinephrine, epinephrine, we get a different set of uh, substance P, polypeptide, and these are all kind of avoidance responses. So we have in ourselves a change in our chemistry and neurochemistry according to our perceptions. And, and I'm amazed, I, I, pardon me for, for making a challenge to this, but I, I see people being sold um, the idea that you have a biochemical imbalance and you need a pharmaceutical to solve that. And I, I, I really, really challenge that model because I think that that's incomplete. Uh, if, if all of a sudden you're sitting in a room just minding your business and a tiger jumped in, was about to eat you, if we did a neurochemistry and blood chemistry on you, we would have all those chemical compounds that are challenging you, norepinephrine, testosterone, all be skyrocketing in a billionth of a second. And if all of a sudden we turned, it turned out that, that that tiger that was jumping on you was Tony Tiger and it hugged you and, it, and you always wanted to meet Tony Tiger uh, and he was your friend, the opposite hormones would change in a second. So what happens is our, our tr transmitters and hormones are changing because of our perceptions. And we sometimes have... And I'm sure everybody's had a situation where you've had emotions about something, you've been reactive to something and either infatuated or resentful. Your hormones are, are being thrown into one side, polarized. And then you have something else occur and you have to just kind of stop what you're thinking and feeling and go off to a next thing. Well, a lot of times those perceptions are still active, even though they're subconscious and they're still running physiology and chemistry and neurochemistry. And, and so what happens is, if we just use the idea, we have an imbalanced chemistry and you need to change it with a drug, we're missing out on the power of our own perceptions and being able to take command of, of transforming our perceptions and transforming our physiology. And so I'm, I'm a very strong on that because I've seen too many hundreds of people with conditions that have been said that they, oh, they need a, some sort of a pharmaceutical to, to solve it. And there may be cases like that, but they're rare compared to the amount that the person has the capacity to change their perceptions and change their chemistry. And uh, I see every weekend in the breakthrough experience, you know, I do the breakthrough experience every weekend. I see it every single weekend. People that have these labeled conditions, cold, told their biochemical imbalance, put on some sort of medication, robbed of any accountability of any perceptions. We go in there and transform their perceptions, their chemistry changes. And all of a sudden they go back and they said, well, somehow it's not needed. The chemistry is not needed anymore. And I said, because they have the power inside. And that's, I want to focus on that. I want to help people get that back. Because I think that that's, uh, they're robbing them of their power and they're robbing their accountability and they're robbing themselves of the, the innate knowledge that they have available to them. And the studying this is very fascinating and I think everybody can benefit. On. We're so used to a hedonistic model in the health fields that we're trying to get rid of all the pains and try to give just nothing but pleasure that we're not realizing that pain and pleasure are part of the mechanisms of healing. And I'll come back to that as we go along here. But, but so what happens is we have these perceptions, they affect and change the neurotransmitters, regulators, modulators, hormones. They go through the fluid systems. They go to the cell receptors. When they get to the cell receptors, they change the conformation and arrangement of the receptors. That opens little gates in the cell walls, uh, triggers the secondary reactions called second messenger reactions, because the primary message is the transmitter. The secondary message is this one at the cell wall. That creates a change in calcium and ions in the cell wall, certain uh, hormones, uh, or certain electrolytes can go into the cell. That creates a series of cascading enzymes, phosphatase if it's parasympathetic and kinase if it's uh, sympathetic. That then goes into the nucleus, goes through the nuclear pore into the nucleus and either turns on or turns off various pore instances of DNA. It loosens up the, the histones wrapping around the DNA. If it wants to cause a cell to, mito to undergo mitosis or transcription to make proteins, or it turns it off and it's regulating that. 
So as Bruce Lipton has wisely stated, when and I've worked with Bruce before, um, that the cell wall is actually governing a lot of nuclear function and a lot of the genetics. The epigenetics, as we call it, is affecting genetics. The methylation, which comes from the sympathetic, and the acetylation, which comes from the parasympathetic, are regulating DNA expression. And so we sometimes have once thought that these are genetic diseases, but now we're looking at the psychology affecting and turning on and turning off the genes. And maybe some of these genetic conditions are also epigenetic in origin. Epigenetic means things that are beyond the genes, upon the genes, things that act upon the genes. In fact, if you look at a cell uh, under my, if you take a sperm and an egg and unite them together and make a zygote, which is the first cell that makes up uh, the body development, every time it divides, it supposedly has the same genes, but there's little signal molecules between the cells as they start to differentiate and start to form that uh, change the cells' um, shapes and functions, et cetera, until we have hundreds of different types of cells, um, uh, bone cells, skin cells, et cetera, even though we have the same genes. So it can't be just genes alone that's causing illnesses. It has to be epigenetic. And that epigenetic is governed by our perceptions. It has a lot to do with our perceptions and normal embryological development and the toolkit. So... So I'm, I'm a firm believer is, is if we go in there and find out what the ratios of those perceptions are in the history, a lot of conditions can change. I'm convinced now that our cells are creating symptoms to guide us back to a balanced perspective. If we see more support than challenge, the parasympathetic comes on and we create parasympathetic symptoms, which is, uh, and for instance, in the cell level, this is what's cool. At the very cell level, you have the nucleus and you have the the plasma membrane around it, the cell membrane around it. Whenever you get something that supports your values, then what happens is there's there are little molecules that transport information and things from the cell wall into the nucleus. So the nucleus can now have the materials ready for dividing into growing. But if we get sympathetic activity, there's another transmitter, another uh, transporter that basically takes information from the nucleus out to the cell wall to defend. Just like we are, if all of a sudden we're a little community and we got a wall around the community and people are attacking the wall, we all go to the wall to protect ourselves. And when we're relaxing and nobody's attacking us, we go inside and we feast and we make love and we procreate. That same dynamics going on in the cell. And there's different uh, transmitter molecules that are actually that are responding according to whether we perceive stress and challenge or support. So what's going on in the cell is actually responding and creating symptoms and certain uh, indicators inside the cell that are building and destroying and mo molecules in the cell that we call disease. We label it. We look under a microscope. We look at the cell and we say, okay, well, that's that condition. We look at the tissue. We look at the organs at different levels of the dynamic. We see different symptoms and we label it that disease, but we don't ever go and ask the question, what's going on in the psychology and the perceptions at that moment? That's where I come in. And that's where I've been doing that for all these years. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that there's psychology underlying these conditions. And uh, it, it's just insane not to see this. And, and the reason why a lot of people haven't addressed this is because of the model in healthcare. The model is based on the assumption you're supposed to feel good all the time. Now, let me, let me just blow that out for a second. Uh, if all of a sudden you go out and you eat a pizza and you eat a steak and you eat a cheesecake and you eat a bunch of strawberries, and then you eat uh, a bunch of peanut butter and you just overeat and pig out and you wake up the next morning with a, you know, congested nose, uh, swelling, oily face, headache, nausea, cramps, bloat, um, flatulence, etc. And you're just really feeling blah. And you go to a, a health professional in medicine or something and, you, and they, they go, well, they give you a symptom for antihistamine for the nasal congestion, anti-headache medicine, <laughs> analgesic. Uh, anti-flatulent, anti-cramps, uh, antibiotics. And they give you all these things and they say, well, you've got these conditions. And then if you go to a, a naturopath or a chiropractor, uh, they said, they look at it differently. They say, well, it looks to me from your history that you picked out last night, your body is doing what it's designed to do. It's designed to create those symptoms as a feedback to let you know not to pick out, you fool. You're exaggerating what you think you can handle in your food and you're, and you're not realizing that your body is giving you symptoms. So are the symptoms health or disease? This is a really interesting question. And I'm convinced that the symptoms we have are our friends as much as our so-called enemies based on the perspective. And I believe that if we learn how to use applied physiology to know what those symptoms are representing, they can give us guidelines into what we're doing psychologically and why we're leading ourselves to those outcomes. 
And that's the thing that I, I agree uh, with the idea of applied physiology. I, I'm a very much a promoter of that instead of the idea that it's symptoms, get rid of them. Because suppressing the symptoms and never getting the message of what it's being there, and to me, is a disservice to the human uh, population. That whole construct, I think, is disservice. It t robs people of accountability. It gives them a false hope of something on the outside. It gives them a, sometimes a pharmaceutical, which has side effects. And it basically is blaming the viruses and the bacteria in some cases. And the reality is those are our, those are commensurable uh, symbiotic uh, organisms that are trying to keep us in balance. Uh, wildlife management of the ecosystem of microbiome is, is more important today than it was 30 years ago. And so that whole model in healthcare is having to change. And so I, I'm, uh, I guess I've been a pioneer in that area. I've been wanting to, to get that message out. One of the reasons I became a chiropractor and not into healthcare in another field, because I believe that, that the power that made the body is what heals the body. And we have the capacity inside us to do transformational healing by changing our perceptions, changing our nutrition, changing our actions, and uh, living a wise lifestyle. And I think our body's creating symptoms to guide us to do that. So I could, I, I'm just, I'm just starting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. It's, it's a, a topic that I'm very passionate about too. You know, having gone through what I went through in my own personal journey that I could hundred percent attest to the, the perception of what I went through. And after having shifting that perception, I realized the blessings in it, you know, rekindling a relationship with my parents, uh, finding my journey as an entrepreneur, um, seeing through the, the flaws in the medical health scheme, which I'm quite passionate about now. And I, and I can totally understand how people get sucked into that cycle of uh, running to the healthcare professionals uh, to try and alleviate the symptoms and then being disappointed and then just getting stuck in that, that cycle, which leads to sort of the next question. Is there a correlation between between the types of thoughts we have and the types of uh, illnesses or diseases we get and how we hold on to them. So the emotions that we run and the types of diseases that they manifest, in other words. Yeah, I, uh, uh, when I first, when I was in clinical practice uh, at, uh, as an intern uh, at chiropractic college, I, um, I noticed a pattern, something that came in that was frequent pattern. There was a, quite a number of Young women, I, I say young now, I'm, I'm in my 60s, so um, they were probably in their 30s, sometimes 40, but 30s typically, and they were usually having one, two, or three children by then, and they were having uh, hypothyroidism, and I saw this pattern, and they, 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 the thyroid gland um, originates from the tongue, immunologically, the tongue has what is called a thyroglossal duct. It, 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 from the bottom of the tongue, it grows down and creates a thyroid down here in the neck area. And um, it divides into two lobes, but it originates from underneath the tongue. And the tongue is involved in speech and swallowing and food. And, and the thyroid is involved in metabolism, speeding up metabolism if it's high or low thyroid is lowing, low metabolism. And when you have low, low uh, thyroid, you have slow slurred speech and slow metabolism. And you end up looking like a bowling pin. You grow wide in the hips um, and narrow at the top. And um, but if you have very high uh, uh, thyroid, the opposite occurs. You narrow down and you end up with uh, fast speech and hyperactive. And I found out that the people with the hypothyroidism very consistently, they um, they were holding in what they wanted to say. And I found out that every time you are wanting to say something but holding it in. Uh, it lowers the thyroid. It, it's a withdrawal. It's a, it's a hesitancy. And um, you're slow at speaking up. And if, on the other side, when you're speaking out, you, you, uh, you end up raising the thyroid. And I thought that's interesting. So I realized that when we, are, we, when we have our set of values, when we feel our values are supported and we're really supported, we tend to minimize ourselves. When we tend to uh, get our values challenged, we tend to exaggerate ourselves. If somebody challenges, we get defensive. We get righteous. We speak up. We talk them down. But if we get if somebody's really saying and supporting us, we become more dependent. We more withdrawn. And we found out that that uh, these girls were having situations where they were they were now having children. They were having to focus on the children. They were stopping their careers, stopping their work, and their husbands were taking care of them. The husbands are now having to work more because they have the second, third child, and they're not seeing the husbands. And they're having more and more work to be done at home and they're not delegating wisely and they're feeling f trapped having to do stuff that's not inspiring to them. They're losing their careers and what they also would love to do besides the children. 
particularly ones that wanted careers. And there's this conflict, but they couldn't speak up because they depended on the husband. And they would do is they would withdraw and they would unconsciously affect their estrogen levels, which is they're not feeling nurtured. And they would um, end up getting their thyroid down. And then they would end up having a situation where they would protect themselves from getting pregnant again because they didn't want to be trapped further. And they were also not speaking up and they were creating hypothyroid conditions. And I saw this pattern over and over again. And uh, so without a doubt, our perceptions and how we see life and our willingness to express or not express can affect glandular function. I found out that if a person is really self-righteous and feels defensive, um, in order to defend itself, it gets taller and its growth hormone goes up. And if something supports and you become dependent, juvenile dependent, your growth hormone goes down. So the sympathetic activates the growth hormone and the parasympathetic side cuts it down again. And so I looked at all the different hormones and I found the autonomic relationships to our, from our perceptions to all the hormones. And there's no doubt there's a correlation. Our estrogen, if we're nurtured, our estrogen goes up. If we're not nurtured, estrogen goes down. We've seen people that uh, felt de de challenged and they become feminized men or masculinized women because of that. And we know that our perceptions can affect those hormones. So various conditions, glandular conditions and hormonal conditions definitely are affected by our perceptions of whether we're over supported or over challenged in our life. And now in actuality, in the breakthrough experience, I've demonstrated to thousands of people that even though we have a thing, every time we judge something, we divide things up into the conscious and unconscious. If we're infatuated with something, we are, we're aware consciously of the upsides, but we're blind to the downsides. If we're resentful to something, we're, we're aware of the downsides, we're blind to the upsides. And so every time we judge and we get to either more sympathetic or more parasympathetic in our perceptions, we literally divide ourselves up into the unconscious and conscious. And in the breakthrough experience, I have people identify with, with questions how to bring the unconscious conscious and rebalance the perceptions to show that with every support was a challenge and every challenge had a support. Once they see that, their physiology normalizes again. And the symptoms that were being created, we're trying to get them back to see that balance. And what's interesting, when we live by our highest values, we have the highest probability of seeing a balanced orientation, more objectivity and more equanimity. And we're living by our lower values and we're not being true to ourselves. We have more polarized perception. We tend to judge more subjectively and we tend to have this symptomatology try to let us know that. So our symptoms are actually trying to get us back to live by our highest values, which is our purpose and the most meaningful thing we can do in life. So I'm convinced that the body is actually creating symptoms to try to guide us back to authenticity, meaningfulness, and inspiration. And I know that Aristotle, back in his times, came to a similar conclusion, and I don't think it's changed. I think that's he was spot on at the time. Uh, thank you, John. And, and, you know, now that we understand how emotions can impact our health, um, you know, now we, you, you trace it back, you say our emotions impact our health and our health impacts uh, these symptoms and these symptoms we address now and currently medically uh, but without looking at the emotions. But now that you've shared this with us, what can we do um, to address these concerns uh, with the emotions and how can we go about changing that for ourselves? Well, the quality of our life is based on the quality of questions we ask. And the questions that bring us uh, uh, the awareness, the conscious awareness of our unconscious to allow us to balance that equation is one of the most powerful healing systems I know. I've said in my book, Count Your Blessings, that I wrote many, many years ago, um, that love and gratitude are still the greatest healers on the planet. There's more transformative feel physiology changes, more spontaneous uh, healing uh, spontaneous remissions of conditions when people all of a sudden transcend their judgments and get back into gratitude and love than anything I know. And uh, I studied healing uh, with healing specialists in different fields in my 20s, particularly, and uh, traveled quite a bit and studied some of the great healers from all the way from the leading cardiovascular surgeons all the way to the, the uh, you know, the spiritual healers to chiropractors, naturopaths, herbalists, uh, I mean, every form of healing I could find, I was starting to look at what was common to the people who had the greatest results. And I found four cardinal pillars, gratitude and love of the heart and certainty and presence of the mind, which goes with gratitude and love of the heart. Those four cardinal pillars were found common to those that are greatest healers and the people that actually heal. And um, as long as there's uncertainty and confusion and wavering and um, an emotional disturbance and everything else, we're going to have illness. But as long as we, when we bring ourselves from poison to poise and from imbalance to balance, 
in our perceptions, we have amazing healing capacities. And so I'm uh, fa fascinated by that. I, I had to, I even noticed, and I didn't mention a minute ago, but when, when a person has their values challenged and they feel bitter towards somebody, the blood sugar goes up uh, as a mechanism and oxygen goes up to, to ready to fight or flight. So glucose levels go up in diabetes uh, when we have this unconscious bitterness going on. And hypoglycemia is just the opposite. When we're minimizing ourselves and sacrificing ourselves for others, um, like a martyr or something like that, the, the blood sugar goes down because we feel like we owe it to people. And we, we've seen this in diabetics. It's very difficult to tell a diabetic what to do, but it's easy to tell a hypoglycemic what to do. So we, we can see these patterns. And so what I do in the breakthrough experience or one-on-ones with people and I consult with them, because in a lot of health conditions, I do more one-on-one. I need to get really specific on what they're, what's going on, what their history is, et cetera. Although many of the people who in the breakthrough experience, we've had, we've had uh, one doctor send 375 patients from his clinic to there. A psychiatric hospital sent over 400 patients to, our, to the breakthrough experience because they've seen the results there and they, they say, go there. We have a, a new organization right now sending there from the health fields. Because they, because they, what we're doing in the breakthrough experience is we're balancing out the perceptions, which balances out the emotions, which balances out chemistry, neurochemistries, and physical, chemi physical chemistries. And then the body does its job. <laughs> we're the one disturbing the body. And so the solution is to ask the questions, to reveal to the conscious mind, the unconscious content that's imbalanced, and liberate it through balance. Anything you're infatuated with occupies space and time in your mind and runs you, and it's noise in the brain. And anytime you're resentful to something, it occupies space and time in your mind and runs you, and it's noise in the brain. And we have, that's called memory and anti-memories now in the new technology and new neurology. So, so anytime you have those imbalanced, you create chemistries that are imbalanced and you create symptoms. And so I just balance them. And I go back all the way back to Galen in the first century, Aristotle in his times, uh, 400 uh, A.D., Fourth century AD. I mean, uh, he um, he was trying to say that it's a it's a balancing act, and even though it's we've evolved and we got way more knowledge today, it still boils down to the same basics. It hasn't changed. Empedocles said the same thing in his time. He said there was love and strife, and when we have an in, uh, integration inside ourselves between conscious and unconscious, you might say we have healing and wellness. And when we don't, when the, everything's out of balance and strife inside our physiology, strife is the splitting of the conscious and unconscious, as Jung would describe. We have uh, illness and illness. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think illness is something to be, uh, you know, it's not, it's, I think it's something to be grateful for in some respects. And part of the healing process that I do in the breakthrough experience, when people have an illness, I ask them, so what are the benefits of getting out of it? And they go, what? There's no benefits of this. I go, what's the benefit you're getting out of it? And they find that it's breaking me, making me decide what I really want to do in my career, the relationship. It's making me uh, humble myself in the relationship. It's making me start to communicate. It's making me change and get on with the things that I've not been doing. There's there's benefits sitting in there, and it's actually a strategy. I'm really at the point where I think that the illnesses are strategic mechanisms by the unconscious unconscious motives to try to get us back into balance so we can live authentic, authentic and, and integral lives. So in the breakthrough experience, I basically help with the proper questions to show people how to do it. And, and you got those questions, it changes your life. You have those the rest of your life learning those. Very important to get those questions. Yeah, and I would encourage you just to remind the audience that we will be making an offer for the, the breakthrough experience at the end. And I love, John, that you said the love and gratitude are the greatest healer on the planet. And, um, you know, the certainty and presence of mind, I think, is so critical. You know, that, you know I love the way that you said that. Um, what would you say the role of nutrition plays on health and what is the impact? We've discussed the emotion. The nutrition is obviously something that's uh, most common out there that people focus on. What would you say is the role of nutrition on health? Well, it, it's, it's – your cells can't function. Uh, the, the cells have chemistry that is uh, oxidizing and reducing and keeping things in balance, and it needs cofactors, minerals and vitamins uh, and enzymes to catalyze these reactions to – maintain met metabolism and metabolic equilibrium. And so without nutrients, we don't function. We have to have the basic macronutrients, the, the carbohydrates, proteins, fatty acids, etc. We also need the micronutrients, the minerals. Um, I just researched yesterday on, uh, I've been, I wrote a two volume set on the origin of life that I, I did a class. It's a five day class on how life possibly originated in the universe and particularly on planet earth. And um, the, the earliest 
rendition of the idea of, for at least a, a geobiosis uh, mechanism, where basically we, we, if, if we believe that life came from the earth itself, there's others that believe it rained upon the earth like a pan-sperm theory that Arrhenius described as Nobel Prize winner, that it's already out there in the universe. And there's no doubt in my mind, they're going to find bacteria at least in the next five to 10 years that are in other, on, on planets and on possibly in other solar systems, but definitely inside our solar system, we're definitely gonna find on our moons and planets, there's gonna be bacteria, extremophile bacteria. And what we needed nutrients for, to kickstart uh, the system, particularly pyrite um, and uh, sulfur and, and certain minerals, um, zinc and copper and these, these minerals. So we need minerals. We need quality foods that have minerals in them. And if we don't eat them, our enzymes are going to, they're going to play, they're going to take their toll. We also need vitamins. They're cofactors that we have to have them. We're not like some species that can manufacture all of them. We have some that we're not, uh, they're vital vitamins that are essential that we can't get without. And so a lot of the foods today are missing those nutrients and they, they need to be in place. And, uh, but what's interesting is even though you can eat quality foods and you can have the proper nutrition supplementation, which I incorporate, um, if you are highly stressed uh, or highly polarized in your perceptions, highly sympathetic or parasympathetic, that affects not only the microbacteria sitting in the microbiome inside the intestines and the digestive system in the mouth, it changes the chemistry, it changes their habitats, it changes their microbiomes. And they're involved in the breaking down of nutrients, the absorption of nutrients. And so, and also our, our cell walls get tighter or looser according to our emotions. So we can have a leaky gut or a tight gut syndrome that basically is affecting our absorption of nutrients. So in addition to having, making sure we're eating quality nutrients, which is essential, that's actually common sense. At the same time, our psychology is affecting how, what we absorb, where it goes in the body and how it's uh, utilized and uh, whether or not we have the right microbiome to be able to help take those nutrients in. So you can eat the nutrients, but a lot of nutrients go passing right through us. I used to, I did a survey and a study many, many years ago when I was an undergraduate where I went down to the sewage treatment plant and I found out that they had to have bulldozers down there to remove all the tablets that went through people that was never absorbed that were supplements. And uh, it was uh, constantly coming down through the pipes and going down the sewage treatment plant. They had to remove those because it was blocking sewage re re recycling. So a lot of nutrients are not even being absorbed. They're passing right through the gut and through the body because one, they're not proper nutrients. They're not, uh, they're, they're falsely advertised as something that would be absorbed, but they're not really absorbed well, or they're not properly absorbed because our psychology is so stressed and our stress system shuts down the digestive system and gets us for defense and shuts down our digestive system. When we get, when we perceive more challenge and support, our digestive system shuts down. That's why if we get stressed while we eat, we don't, we don't feel well, we don't digest well. If we relax and we meditate, we do gratitude exercise before we eat, grace, um, it increases the probability of absorbing and assimilating and helping our nutrients, et cetera. And our bacteria, the microbiome that sits inside our intestines particularly, but in all parts of our body, they're moving around and they're, they're literally changing according to emotions and changing according to nutrients. If we eat a lot of fatty foods, a different type of bacteria start growing. If we eat a lot of fruit, fruits and vegetables, another type of bacteria start growing. And they're constantly having to do it. And we know that certain illnesses are correlated with those bacteria. And those bacteria are correlated with what we eat and what we're psychology is. And so now they've got a, the microbiome is now being studied and they're almost correlating with it. the different types of illnesses are all being correlated with the different types of bacteria and viruses there. So instead of get, taking an antibiotic and getting rid of it, I haven't had an antibiotics in 45 years or any form of medication whatsoever. But, but if you, instead of taking that and getting rid of all the, the, the bacteria, which is foolish, we now are trying to use different types of foods to re-regulate the bacteria and cure our own condition and change our psychology, which regulates that. That's much smarter in the long run. And it's, it's managing our wildlife ecosystem inside us. And instead of sitting there and just killing it and then hoping it will re, re uh, balance itself. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I forgot the question, but I just. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's a, it really is a holistic look at it. You know, I think, um, you have to look, you know, I'm fascinated by the perception again. I bring it back to that because in some individuals, the stress can actually activate them so they can climb mountains and r race around tracks at in crazy speeds and have uh, split second reactions where other people, that same stress will cause them to shut down and, and sort of go in and, and completely collapse. So 
you know, we said, uh, and we touched on the nutrition and natural medicine, and I think Plato actually said that let food be thy medicine. Um, is there still a place for conventional medicine um, in, in, in this conversation? Absolutely. There, there you know, I, I was sitting in, um, well, not sitting, I was sitting on my surfboard. I took off on a wave and dropped into a beautiful wave uh, in Cardiff, California, a number of years ago. This is quite a ways back. But I, I went there and I got in a beautiful little tube and I was riding this tube. And then all of a sudden at the end, it got too tight and it flipped me. When it did, it uh, sliced off this ear, believe it or not, luckily. And I, I found it floating in the, uh, uh, the water, luckily. And uh, I wouldn't have my ear today. But I grabbed it. I walked into the beach. My kids are playing in the sand there. And we quickly ran over to a, um, a surgeon at the emergency ward to sew my ear back on. And um, I, I didn't go, okay, I need to take some nutrients or I need to sit and meditate at that moment. So uh, in that emergency situation, I'm very grateful for emergency team and a, and a neurosurgeon team to be able to do their job, their specialty. And um, there's definitely times when you have acute um, situations uh, that you require medical care. I'm not negating medical medicine for acute situations. It's many of the chronic conditions that I think that are and, and, and many of these conditions that we deal with that are common to everyday conditions that I question that's the smartest approach. A lot of the overuse of, of antibiotics for these years and the poor, inadequate, proper use of them um, has led to now superbugs, which means we have to come up with alternative ways of dealing with these, um, these reactions. But our immune system is, is, if we're under stress, our immune system shuts down. And when it shuts down, our, our bacteria change ratios. There's a thing called eustress and distress. Eustress is healthy and brings wellness and distress is illness oriented. So whenever we are pursuing challenges that inspire us, doing something we really love doing that we wanna do and tackle a challenge, like a young boy doing his video game that he loves and he's challenged by it, but he wants to tackle it, that actually helps the immune system and helps us have resiliency and adaptability. But when we're doing something we're not inspired to do and we feel we're trying to escape it and we keep having to deal with it, that's distress. And distress is unquestionably causing illness. And that is because the sympathetic is dominating and the cortisol levels keep going up and shuts down the immune system and causes all the digestive systems and endocrine systems to be affected. And, and, and all of our, our resources, instead of going to genetic mutation, uh, mitosis, it goes out to the cell wall in defense. It's constantly living under defense. And uh, that's not a very healthy state. It, it means you're eating a quick, it's like going and getting a, 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 a quick candy bar because uh, you don't have time to eat. That's the same kind of stress levels. And now with all the ridiculous amounts of sugar that's out there, which is, it's insane what people eat. I, I've never added sugar or salt or any things like that into my diet for 45 years. I was in a movie called uh, Overfed and Undernourished. And it's, if you haven't seen that movie, I think everybody on the world would benefit from that movie because it's a wake up call about how we eat. And I think that's essential. But there is, there is an essential component of eustress, but not distress. And so I, I think if people fill their day with high priority actions, inspire them and pursue challenges that are meaningful, that are purposeful to their lives, it actually promotes wellness and longevity. And it adds telomeres to the ends of the genes and it gives you a longer lifespan, more mitotic divisions available. The hayflick limit is transcended. But if all of a sudden you're in distress, the telomere, telomerase and everything else goes down and everything else and, and we don't get any more telomeres and we start aging. We start to having the opposite effect. So we literally can redo our body. It's amazing. It has the capacity to regenerate and redo things really beautifully if we're not interfering with it. That's why I became a chiropractor because of the philosophy. I really believe that, uh, that we had more power inside us than what we've been given credit. And we haven't been honoring that. And now, now with the advancements of epigenetics and, and applied physiology and what we're learning, um, it, it is now pointing to that. That's the secret of it. And we, we, but most people don't undertake the time. They don't have a value on their wellness. And so they don't take the time for it. And they don't know the power of it. And they just quickly go for an ill for every pill, a pill for every ill, I mean. And I think that I always say, I, I said on the secret word, incurable means curable from within. That's a brilliant way to end it. And I think, you know, we, we've 
conditioned ourselves into this fast food, fast fixed uh, um, type of mindset. And it's no wonder that people get trapped in that space. So when people are trapped in that space, as I just mentioned, is there something that we can do to help those people that we care about, the emotions that are impacting their lives? For example, our children, our wife, our husband, what are the common correlations between the emotions, for example, and childhood issues? Well, every human being has, a, as I said earlier, as a set of values and Anytime we communicate with them, uh, if we project self-righteousness, our values onto them and try to fix them and get them to change, et cetera, they're going to resist, retaliate, and defend and hold on stronger to their own value system. But if we ask questions to them, find out what their needs are, their values, what's important to them, and communicate uh, and expand their repertoire by communicating how these new ideas that might help them could expand and help them fulfill what's meaningful to them, they become receptive to new ideas. And a lot of children, um, because of the way we grew up, in the 1950s, it was taught that children who were blank slates and they need to be taught what their values are, they need to be socialized, and they need to fit into the herd and be sheep instead of shepherds. And it's the children that actually stand up um, that uh, are different that actually are the leaders of the future, the entrepreneurs. Uh, the misfits, as uh, Steve Jobs likes to say. And uh, so we we have to have a find a balance between supporting and challenging our children because that love is a balance of support and challenge. If, if you imagine if you had a relationship with somebody and all they did is said, I just want to do whatever you want to do whenever you want me to do it. Just tell me what to do. And they just supported you all the time. You'd say, go get a, go get a life. And they'd be a doormat. And you'd, you wouldn't respect them and it'd be boring. But if they challenged you and pushed you and told you, you had to do something like time, you'd get burned out. And neither of those extremes create love. Love is always a balance of support and challenge. It's a synthesis and synchronicity of all company opposites. So what I do, and I, I you know, I, I mentioned the breakthrough experience, but the breakthrough experience, I teach people how to ask questions that bring balance to perceptions, how to prioritize our lives in such a way that we are living by the highest priority where we have the most objectivity, which spontaneously brings balance to our physiology and psychology. And there's, there's things a person can do by by the questions they ask and learn. That's what the Demartini method is, the method I've developed on how to balance out pretty well. Every one of the, every one of the psychological imbalance perceptions that I've seen in all the health conditions and all the stresses that people face, I've looked for questions on how to rebalance them all. And there's, I assure you, there's, there's a certain set of questions that can pretty well knock out pretty well everything that you're going to face. And if you know those questions and you ask those questions, liberate yourself by them, you can take command of your life. And, and that to me, that's that's what I'm, there's nothing more inspiring to me than hearing about people that took command of their life, changed their life, and went off and did what their mission was and did something amazing with their life and, and brought healing. I mean, we've had people in the breakthrough experience, for instance, on almost every t possible friggin' condition. And I tell them, I'm not here to cure any condition. I don't like to label conditions because I believe it's all physiological. And it's all doing its job to try to get you authentic. If we help you get authentic, we help you get inspired, we help you get back into balance, we help you prioritize your life. We help you delegate lower th lower priority things so you're not bogged down with things that aren't inspiring and help you get into your, your executive center, the one that brings governance to physiology and not the amygdala, which is trying to escape. Your physiology does amazing things and it has the power to, to heal. And I think that that's uh, being minimized in some health professionals and, I, and I'm going to speak up about it. So... Yeah. And I think we all should because, you know, we we, we need to uh, take ownership of our own emotions and take responsibility, I feel, uh, for the way we feel and also the, the people around us. John, just quickly, uh, before I go into making the offer for the audience, um, can we look at a couple of the issues that uh, people have asked us to clarify on um, with relates, sorry, and correlate them briefly. Uh, we've got diabetes, uh, eczema, stuttering, colds and flus, fertility issues, acne. Can we look at some of those common issues uh, and see what thoughts correlate to, to those, uh, those conditions? Go, go through the list one at a time. What's the first one? Perfect. Uh, diabetes. Well, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, I found when I worked with diabetics, because I had a lot of diabetics uh, patients over the years, and in seminars, I mean, they, they, they're pretty common. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that if anybody who has a family member who's a diabetic will know what I'm about to say, they are, um, they like to make decisions on their own. They like to be um, the ruler, you might say. And there's a, there's a very 
they may not even be conscious of it, although many are, but there's a, there's a, a, an unconscious or conscious bitterness and frustration, and they're constantly under a sympathetic uh, drive that's sitting there. Now, let me, let me explain something here. Uh, let's say that you and your, your wife or husband is sitting there on a Sunday, relaxed, casual, uh, sitting there, and then all of a sudden you get into a little bit of a quarrel and you get into a fight and you're yelling and screaming at each other and you're kind of having a go at each other. And then all of a sudden the doorbell rings unexpectedly and you, you stop the fight because the doorbell's ringing and you run over the doorbell and you put on a big smile. Hi, how's it going? But deep inside, you're still festering this incomplete conversation that's sitting over here in the, pa in the, in the other room. And then you're sitting there and your, your friends come by and for two hours they were around and so you kind of forgot that. You, you repressed it kind of. And it's sitting in the subconscious. Any active judgment is conscious and unconscious. But anything that's previously that's been repressed goes into the subconscious. And that subconscious is running physiology. And so what I find in these the diabetes is that their subconscious bitterness are causing the glucose levels to go up for a fight or flight response. And it's just chronic. It just keeps going on. And they haven't addressed it. And very commonly, you'll find that they have, if we find out and ask this, the right questions, we can actually find out who it is and who it's related to. And it can be themselves, judging part of themselves to another part of themselves, but it's 90% of the time it goes to somebody in the family. And very commonly, the father figure. I found that process. And so there's a, a defense going on. And, and so it, it, we have, to, in the breakthrough experience, what we do, or one-on-ones, we, what we do is we have to identify all of those mechanisms and we do the Demartini method on it, and we step by step, methodically clear each one. And as we do, we've had people that so astonishingly have had taken uh, insulin for years, all of a sudden coming down off the insulin. In some cases, completely coming off it, which is unheard of. And it's like, what? And I've had even the medical professionals say, "Well, you can't do that. You can't." Do and then the beta cells are gone, and they're not functioning. And and the receptor sites on beta, the diabetes two, they're they're hypersensitive. Why? We don't ask why. There's a zebra in the bathtub and you're measuring the stripe length. You're measuring the amount of dung. You're measuring the length. You're measuring the width. You're measuring everything about the zebra. But you didn't ask, why is the zebra there? Why is he there in the bathtub? And that's what's going on. And in and, and diabetes, there's, there's, I've seen that repeatedly go on. And the hypoglycemics are just the opposite persona. These are personalities that are involved in this. And if we change that, we clear that, uh, the diabetes changes. And uh, with their receptivity. Now, exercise also helps that. Proper food will do that. Although getting a diabetic, typically getting them to eat a certain way, they don't. They have their own way of doing it. They want to be told. When you talk to them, you have to communicate where they feel it's, it's their decision. But if you, uh, if you work with that and balance that, you can change the chemistry. And um, I've seen it too many times to ignore. It's, it's, uh, so I'm not going to, I'm going to stand up on that one because I've seen it too many times. We've helped it. Now, what's the next condition? The next one is eczema. Well, eczema is, is very commonly when we are scattered and subordinating ourselves to a lot of people and trying to multitask and try to do a bunch of things that aren't really highest on our value and scattering ourselves, um, we can, in a sense, have a, a low-grade chronic um, sympathetic response, and that can attack. The histamine levels can attack the cells and release uh, exudates and materials, and we can get an eczema. Some, some psoriasis and eczema, um, they can come out similar in that respect. But we can have these type of conditions show up because of a chronic, scattered stress response. So what I do with those situations is um, I find out, we try to find out, I've just developed a new method for this one now. I, I try to find out exactly who we're subordinating to. And um, then I basically find out what it is it about them that you think they have that's more authoritative than you. Is it more intelligent, more success, more achievements or something? And find out where in you. In the breakthrough experience, I ask, what, whatever you see in other people, where do you have it? Because any trait you disown on the outside um, is creating an illness on the inside. You've got to own things. You've got to be able to embrace all things inside yourself. You don't need to get rid of any part of yourself to love yourself. So in that condition, I go in there and I have them identify who they're subordinating to, who they're trying to please at the expense of their own highest values. And one by one, we go in there and we neutralize the, the infatuation of those people and the, the giving them power over them and get them back into priority. And the second to get back into priorities and say no to other things and get into things, their physiology calms down, their stress levels drop. 
their use stress goes up, but their distress goes down. And um, the body normally takes care of itself. We also give them supplementation and vitamins B and, and vitamins uh, A. And we make sure that they're eating decent foods and make sure they're getting proper uh, fatty acids and things of this nature. But but that's a, psychologically, that's where I go. And um, it's not that hard to to um, to transform that. I had a I have to in a case. There's a gentleman who is from Florida who had had um, this eczema f on scalp, elbows. There was it was on almost all the major joint overlapping the joints. Uh, since childhood, he, he could remember as far back as he could remember. And he was now 42 years old. And he had a major, major, major trying to please his father figure. And the family on the father's side had high expectations for being a, a health professional. And uh, the constant um, in his perception. Now, this it didn't turn out to be true. When we went through the breakthrough experience. We found out that he had support and challenge. But his perception was that he was constantly never good enough, constantly trying to do it and always trying to push himself and drive himself to do something. And we cleared that in Dallas, Texas, when he came to the breakthrough experience in the breakthrough. And um, that was the end of his psoriasis. And that was 20 something years ago, about 22 years ago. Psoriasis hasn't been back since. And that happened in one cathartic experience of realization and relinquishing of his charge and expectations on himself based on his perceptions of his family and dad, particularly. So I've seen that um, many cases. So I, 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 we, we subordinate, we inject the values of others. We try to be somebody we're not. We stress ourselves out, banging our head against the wall. We judge ourselves. We attack ourselves with histamine. Our immune system gets run down because of all the stress we have. And um, we create the illness as a feedback. And it's convoluted because we don't, if we don't know how to ask the right questions. We, we go, oh, we just take a medication. But we never, we never actually go and look inside and uncover that. That's, that's been my fascination all these years. And I think, you know, we'll go through the rest of the list because I've no doubt we've got a 20-minute Q&A after this. And I'm sure a lot of the common ones, colds and flus that we mentioned now will come up. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to leave those ones out. But I, I did hear you mention, John, uh, the breakthrough experience of the Demartini method that you can use to balance your emotions uh, you were just talking about. And I know you teach that in the two-day seminar, the breakthrough experience. Can you advise a little bit more about the, the program and how the audience – uh, when they're attending this, will gain the skills and able to apply this process and, ass and assist them in with their health, vitality, um, and even with the disease that they may be struggling with? Well, the Breakthrough Experience is a program I've done now 1,108 times. We're about to do it in San Francisco here this weekend, 1,109 times. Um, it's the program that I set out to do 28 plus years ago. I'm going to my 29th year now. Uh, and it's designed to give people their power back. Um, so what we do is we're, we're interested in empowering all seven areas of life. We have, a, we have an, 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 a mind quest, what I call a mental quest, which is waking up our genius, our understanding, our wisdom, and our creative capacities. And I show people how to do that. And then, there's a, then we also are interested in building business and having a vocational quest. And I believe that people today have a, the, the potential to have a global business of whatever they want, particularly with the internet today. And I show people what they can do to help build that. Um, I, I'm interested in helping them financially because a lot of people live in a fantasy financially and they, they don't know that their values are going to determine their financial destiny. So I help them find what their values are, help them restructure them if necessary to, so they can finally see opportunities and take advantage of opportunities and start building wealth in their life. And then there's also family dynamic because if you're projecting your values onto other people and not honoring their values back to you, you're going to have hell in relationships. So I show you how to communicate with dialogue, not alternating monologues, and how to respect another individual and how to own the traits of other individuals so you're not judging them. To, and that, that is enormous impact in the breakthrough experience. And then in, in the social, I'm showing people how to make up their leadership. When people are congruent and they see everything that goes on, including their symptoms on the way, not in the way, they wake up a natural born leader inside. So I show them how to do, develop leadership and the different styles of leadership and what to do with it and what they want to lead and help them get clear on that based on their mission. And I also take the physiology and that's where we go into the symptoms and what the symptoms are trying to say. And, and that all depends on the group because some groups are more emphasis on business, some are on uh, health areas, some are on financial areas, different groups have different uh, needs. So I don't know what I'm going to get into till I get the group there, but we'll go into all of them We'll put a little emphasis on certain ones based on the needs of the group. 
And also the spiritual quest. I believe that we're not here to live under some sort of dogmatic, uh, suppressed kind of uh, religious institutionalism as much as we're here to be inspired individuals and to love and appreciate people and uh, to be able to realize that that's really the highest of all commandments is to love uh, others as ourselves and to love the way the universe is and appreciate the universe. And so in the breakthrough experience, I show people how to empower all seven of those areas. And I, and I'm, I'm, I set out to do that when I was 18 uh, to master my life. And that's what I call mastering life. And I think that uh, people can do that. In the breakthrough experience, I show people how to not subordinate to people on the outside, how to set goals that are congruent with their highest values, how to increase the probability of achievement, how to dissolve uh, in, in the Demartini method, which is uh, the method I've developed all these years. And um, I show people how to own the traits of the greats so they don't they can play in a bigger playing field. I show them how to, to own whatever they see in others so there's reflective awareness instead of deflective uh, awareness. I show people how to neutralize any infatuations, resentments, or prides or shames. I show people how to dissolve uh, resentments and fears. I show people how to dissolve labels that we put on people or being labeled and how to transcend labels so you're not affected by people's labeling of you. I show you how to see the synchronicity of opposites so you can appreciate the hidden order and the apparent chaos and how to break fantasies and nightmares that people have stored in their subconscious mind they're unconsciously running their life. They're not even realizing it. it's running their decisions and they're reacting before they even think. So it's a very powerful 24-hour experience. Um, it goes from 8 in the morning till midnight and then again from about 9 till about 7 or 8 in the evening. And it's it's impact. It's, it's not a rah-rah session. It's not a, you know, kumbaya. It's, it's a very informative, very practical, very hands-on, very experiential uh, transformation. Um, I mean, you're... There's the, the things that people are going to experience in there. If they've got a charge on themselves and they can't look in the mirror and say, thank you, I love you for who they are, and they got some sort of judgments on themselves, they can come and they can clear that. If they got major charge on somebody else, they can clear it. If they got a health issue, they can gain insights on what's leading to that health issue. I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of things in the breakthrough experience, and there's no two exactly the same. We have people that come to the breakthrough experience for different reasons, but um, almost every one of those seven areas, they come to it but they walk away with a, a deeper appreciation of themselves and the universe around them. And they have the tools on how to manage their way uh, and not, not about survival. It's about inspired lives. I believe that we deserve to have an inspired life. Great experiences for people that want to go and have an inspired life. And uh, that's such a, power, such a powerful weekend to think you can get a group of people together uh, like that for two days, John, and be able to take them through these processes in a, in a formal, uh, st strategic, it's, uh, strategized way where they're not wasting any time, but they're getting right to the point and they're focusing on those, those elements. Uh, so this is, at this stage, I'd just like to open up the offer to the audience. So we're going to put the breakthrough experience offer up for you. Uh, mm -hmm. the offer will be available for the next two hours and the uh, Demartini Institute team and everybody is on standby ready to jump on and process, answer any questions and, and process your order. So if you would like to attend the breakthrough experience, um, We've got a special offer, like I said, for the webinar, additional 10% off the current advertised early bird price, plus you're getting a free Inspired Destiny online course, which normally retails for about $400. And that has four hours of powerful information that will prepare you for the breakthrough experience. So that's something that you can do before you attend the breakthrough experience. So by the time you walk in that door, you're ready to, to rock and roll and you know exactly what you, what you need to tackle. Uh, John, could you just share a little bit quickly on the Inspired Destiny course? Well, Inspired Destiny is, you know, I've been blessed. To, when I was 17, 18 years old, Paul Bragg inspired me. And one night, one hour, one man, one message, my life changed. I'm doing what I'm doing today because of that one night. And I've, I've had a special, uh, I guess you could say, and meaningful connection to teens. I spoke to 600 girls the other day in, in Sydney, Australia. Uh, we did a, a Young Adults Inspired Destiny again, also in Sydney over there. I love doing that because my life changed and I like helping teens. So we started a program in Africa, South Africa, called the Young Adults Inspired Destiny Program. And it was designed for teens to transform their lives, to find their mission, to, to, to deal with all the stuff that they, the pressure they're having from their parents, from society, from the peer pressure, from schools, from uh, transitioning into the career world. Everything that they face, we, we, we give them a ways of solving it. Well, what we did is we, uh, I turned it into a book called Inspired Destiny also, but I redid it slightly to make sure it matched people at different ages. 
So it really wasn't just limited to teens because the truth is it works for everybody. I mean, there's, there's, there, no matter what your age is, the same principles are still going to apply. And so what I did is I took that, that entire book and I took the course that I normally did for teens. I then did it for adults. And then I condensed it into as tight as I can in this particular program. And it's just packed with practical things you can do and understanding how our values work and how to, how to live an inspired life. And it dovetails beautifully with the breakthrough experience. That's why I thought it'd be a great little intro to keep people engaged until they're ready to get to the class itself, the breakthrough. The breakthrough is very, very practical experiential, but the practical tools that'll be in this, this online course is, uh, I, I'm absolutely certain. I don't know anybody that's going to go through there or has gone through that they didn't say thank you for that. That's a, it's a really nice gift. But it's, um, it helps set the stage for the breakthrough experience. And the breakthrough experience, I can't put in words. I, I, I get letters daily from people who attended the breakthrough experience. I mean daily. And people that have changed their life. People have gone on to write books. People have gone out and made movies. People have gone out and, as celebrities. People have gone and, and uh, people that have, have not been able to have children. We had a woman that basically said, I, I've been trying to have children. I'm going through IVFs and everything else. And we went in there. We've uncovered an issue that she had with her mother and she was highly resentful to her mother. And she says, I never want to be a disempowered woman like my mother. And I'm, and, but at the same time, the father was aggressive. I don't ever want to be with a aggressive man. So she was basically a business person and was literally devaluing the feminine side inside her that was disempowered in her mind. And uh, we went in there and cleared the issue with her mother, had her go in and appreciate herself. And um, she was spontaneously able to get pregnant. I mean, bam, like that, and had done everything trying to get pregnant. So this is the kind of things that change. And the Aspire Destiny program and the Breakthrough Experience, I know the combination of those two is a very, very powerful tool, and it's, it'll help people, I'm certain. And, and it's free. It's $400, $400 worth of value in four hours. I love the fact that it's made in South Africa, and I love the fact that it was uh, produced for teens as, as youth is another one of my passions too. So for the audience, a special offer for webinar registrants only for the next two hours. The Breakthrough Experience will be presented by John Demartini himself. It's not uh, somebody else that comes in to facilitate, and you only get an hour of Dr. Demartini. He is there for the full two days, one-on-one uh, -on -one in person with you, helping to get that breakthrough. I don't know many other teachers that, that will give that level of input to you, so it's a very valuable opportunity. You'll see that there'll be a, a link to the right-hand side of, uh, of the screen in the offer that'll come up. You just All you have to do is click on that book now. It'll take you through to uh, a page. Uh, on that page, you'll see the appropriate flag. We've got uh, UK, we've got America, we've got Canada, we have Australia and South Africa. Just locate the um, course that's related to the location where you're from and click on the link and go through the process. As I mentioned, the Demartini Institute is there. So if you'd like to get that extra 10% off the current advertised price, plus the free gift, uh, gift valued at $400 uh, with the Inspired Destiny course. Um, jump on and, and really take advantage of this opportunity. Um, you won't be disappointed. So, John, I think what we can do now is uh, go into the q and I think that's going to be a fantastic um, we've got about 20 minutes of Q&A, so I'm going to be reading the questions to you. And um, while we were doing the webinar, there was a stream of questions that actually came through. So I'm just going to quickly scroll down to the bottom to find them. Uh, there we go. So the first question, John, and we've got 20 minutes starting now. Uh, I've been, this question is from Brian. I've been on antibiotics for the past year to treat adult acne and Roskia. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I'm worried about coming off the antibiotics in case my acne and rust. However, I'm also worried about the dangers of staying on the antibiotics too long. What should I do? That's a, a great question. Um, some of the answers that I may give you may not be what people want to hear, but my, my job is not to please people all the time. My job is to deliver the what I find to be more accurate. So just know that what I find, if you have a significant degree of acne, the first thing I do is I look at your diet and I make sure that you're not eating uh, sweets like soft drinks, um, any, any artificial sweeteners, sweetenings, any sugary content. Um, I, I, I just say that's ridiculous. Knock it out and get into natural foods, natural fruits, natural vegetables, you know, fish, fowl, more of a Mediterranean style diet. Because I've seen a lot of people, particularly teens, that are just drinking just crap, excuse the expression, 
It's not even food substance. And they are having acne results from that, just that alone, is a response in the body for some of the materials that are sitting in these drinks. Now, that may not be the case, but if it is, my advice is let's get your, your diet back in, in order. The second thing is I find an acne, if it's a boiling type of acne, which you would be on a medication, um, yes, you may find the bacteria there, but that's not, I don't find that to be the cause. I find it's a self-depreciation. Uh, depression is a comparison of your current reality to a fantasy, an unrealistic expectation that we have about ourselves. And anytime we are trying to live, uh, trying to please other people, trying to set up a, an expectation that we can't live by, and we're beating ourselves up, that boiling up inside, you might say, literally breaks us out in acne. So you might want to make a list of the things that you're doing um, the things that you feel that you're beating yourself up about. Now, I know this is going to sound like a commercial, but it, it, the real truth is it's the best thing I could advise you. Find somebody, con into our office, either come to the Breakthrough Experience and learn how to do the method on yourself or contact the office and let's find somebody who's a facilitator of mine because I got hundreds of facilitators around the world that can assist you in clearing out any judgments you have on yourself and also check on the diet. Um, because it's not that hard to dissolve. Once you clear out the baggage, emotional baggage that's inducing it, then you will consider testing a weaning process with your doctor on the, on the attempt to wean off the antibiotics. But not until you, we, I would not even consider taking off the antibiotics until I actually made sure that I cleared the stuff that I know is sitting there, the stuff that you're self depreciating on. Because if you're beating yourself up and you're 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 feeling shamed about something or feeling not good enough or feel like you're not living up to it and you have unbelievable expectations that you're not living by, either from from injected values of authorities or from you to self, you set up fantasies that aren't real. That self depreciation will boil out into acne, and so uh, I go in there and I, I find out what they are. It's a series of questions I ask, and I go in there and find out what they are. I do it in the breakthrough experience for people with acne, and I go in there and find out what the heck is your what are you judging. And is it is it uh, is something self depreciating, and and any time you expect yourself to live uh, either one sided, happy without sad, positive without negative, pleasure without pain, or any time you expect yourself to uh, to live outside your values and somebody else's values, acne will come up as a feedback system to let you know that. So I go in there and I find that out. I don't take you off the medication, the antibiotics, until we've cleared some of those. Then we work with the doctor and said we've been clearing on psychology. We've been changing diet. We'd like to see if there's any possible way we could now wean it 10% uh, at a time. And then if we go for a period of time, 10%, there's no uh, re repercussions. We didn't do another 10%. We just wean it off until you're then freed back onto your life again. And believe it or not, it's not that difficult to do. Too many people have had that result. But if we're eating crazy foods that aren't really healthy for us and we're self-depreciating, acne is a feedback system to us. Thank you, John. And our hormones are out of balance. Our testosterone goes out of balance, and we, we, we have our effects from that. Fantastic. We've got our next question here from Keith. What is the best way to affect so-called chronic pain, pain that has been created and recreated for years by the belief that the pain is able to be chronic? Well, there is a thing called acute and chronic pain. Uh, acute pain usually has a direct correlation to something that is damaging cells, uh, irritating nerves. Uh, it's neurological in origin. It is uh, acute and short-lived. And uh, when you boot, bruise yourself, when you rip something, you pair, pull something, uh, you, you sharp ob objects affect you, those things cause acute pain. Chronic pain is different. Chronic pain when they can't find any logical reasons that are keep stimulating it, um, that is usually what they call glial pain. It's not neurological pain, it's glial pain. There's a different transmitters involved. And the glial pain uh, is involved with attentions and intentions, therefore it's value driven. And we usually find a unconscious motive driving the reason to do it. Now I had a lovely lady who is in the, Mer the Marion Hotel in Dublin, Ireland, who I consulted with who had had pain claimed since young childhood. And um, we found out, I, I asked her a simple question. So what's the benefit of getting out of the pain? And she's, well, I'm not getting benefit out of it. And I said, I understand that. 
but no one will continue to do something unless they get more advantage and disadvantages out of it. So what's the pain advantages? And she looked at me like puzzled and how dare you ask that? And I said, let's look. What's the benefit of getting out of the pain? And she couldn't come up with any for a few. And I thought, could it be this? Could it be this? Could it be this? Finally, she said, well, yes. Then she found out that when she was young, her sister was very bright, very good in sports and very attractive. She, on the other hand, was like the antiparticle, which is very common in family dynamics. She was not the brightest. She was not the most attractive and she was not in sports. So her sister got all the attention and get all the, all the accolades and there's no way she could compete with her. So children uh, will find alternative ways to get competition in competition to get affection from the parents and from society. And her case was she'd get injured, she'd get sick, she'd get in pain. And then the, the parents would go away from the other girl and have to give her attention. And so she developed a strategy. And this is why if a child has a boo-boo out on the street, scrapes its elbow or whatever, and comes running home and doesn't cry for two, weeks, two blocks, then comes and sees mommy there and starts to cry all of a sudden. Uh, if you sit there and give it attention and, and hug it and go and give it ice cream, which is foolish, or go and, you know, oh, you have a boo-boo, let's go to the movies. And you just reward pain responses uh, instead of asking, so what did you do? How did you initiate this? What will you do next time different and help them learn through it? They can grow up the idea using pain as a strategy to get what they want in life. I see it every week in the breakthrough experience. I watch people do that. They play victims instead of victors, and they become victims of their history instead of masters of their destiny. So I'm not saying that this case is, but I'm just saying that uh, it's wise to go and look for unconscious motives. So what you do is you ask yourself, what are the benefits you're getting out of it? Are you getting closer to your family? Are you getting a, to go and do a different career that you're going to do? Are you getting out of having to go to work in a way that you don't and they're not inspired by? Is it allowing you time to think? Is it giving you time to watch a movie? Is it is it because you're not engaged in what you're doing in your life? I always say that if you're not filling your day with high priority actions that inspire you and in being engaged in life, you'll go into the amygdala and create a desire for a one-sided world and then get smacked by the other side. And um, I said that addictive behavior is a compensation for unfulfilled and unmeaningful value systems. So the, the people that are using pain in order to get that, which is glial pain, has an unconscious motive. So asking what is the benefit you're getting at it and keep going until you get a tear in the eye, uh, you'd be surprised. And, and I tell people to write down 150 benefits of what they're getting out of the pain. And as they are trying to do that, which is not an easy project, as they do that, there'll be some that'll bring tears to the eyes and go, oh my God, no wonder I'm doing this. And this lady, when I asked her, what are the benefits you're getting out of that? She had unbelievable amount of tears. She says, could you, do you think I could actually be doing this all these years in order to gain attention? And then it becomes a habit and my, my persona and the way I live my life. I said, what do you think? And she looked at me with tears and she said, I think that's it. And I said, you've been sitting there, you've tried medications, you've tried this, you've tried all these things, but you never asked yourself that question. Anyway, that changed for her pain, that realization. That's incredible. Uh, we've got another question here. Um, I'm in my 40s and starting to suffer quite often from erectile dysfunction. My doctor and wife wants me to take medication. What should I, uh, but I would like to avoid if possible, what should I do, Dr. Demartini? Well, that's a great question. I, I um, The first thing I would do is, <laughs> this is not going to be kosher to some people, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the first thing I would do is to find out if it's if there's built up emotional charges between him and his wife, uh, because uh, the, the the organs of sexuality aren't actually the penis and the vagina, as some people think. Those are those are kind of a secondary uh, uh, expressors. The brain is the real organ of sexuality, and our perceptions. I mean, everybody here can have a, a situation where they see something walk by that's a turn on. And uh, all of a sudden, the blood supply goes out of the cortex into the other organs. And then other times, you can have that same person turn around and do something that challenges your values. And, and all of a sudden, the sex drive goes down again. So sex I've, I've seen people have a sexual turn on and then discover something about the person. In the second they discover it, it goes away. I've also seen people. I had a lady that uh, alive in a seminar who said, Dr. DiMartini, I'm trying to find my soulmate. I just want to find a soulmate. And I said, oh, what about this guy over here? And she looked at him and he goes, oh, God, that's not my, my style at all. And I said, well, do you know who this person is? 
And she goes, uh, no, should I know him? And I said, well, you don't know who he is? He's one of the most famous people in the world. He's, he's the wealthiest billionaire, one of the wealthiest billionaires in the world. And I, and I concocted a story about how great this person was and all the things he's done. And she came up afterwards and she said, well, can I get his contact details? And she was turned on by it. And I showed her that that was all about perception. So her perception is what's creating this, this scenario. So what I do is I, I have people go through when they have that situation, as I have them go through and do the Demartini method on the partner and clear every single thing all the way back as far as they've been with that person that they could think of that could be unconsciously or subconsciously triggering a reaction to shut down the reproductive cycle. Because I, I assure you that ha this happens. This is this, I see this. This is common. And so what happens is clear it. Going to do the DMR team, I think, clear it in the breakthrough. So you do your mate in the, in, the, in the program. I show you exactly what to do. You start clearing out all those, those little stored up little things that shut it down. And then we can also be intimidated if all of a sudden, because what shuts it down is some, somehow an, a stress response. So if somehow the, the woman has a higher drive, a higher libido than you, that'll shut it down because you feel like you're under performance. You have, to, you have to prove yourself to them. That'll shut it down. If there's any emotional charges there that you think is interfering with the, the support of your highest values, it'll shut it down. So we go and we find out what those are and we clear them. And um, it's amazing what happens just from that alone. And then we find out if all of a sudden you still can get turned on, uh, either in normal functioning by yourself or by somebody else, if you can get turned on and to keep a, an erection for a period of time, then you, you obviously it's not just, it's not your, your physiology. And probably you've checked your physiology with health specialists and that's not probably what it is. But what, what's going on is probably the accumulation of subconsciously subtle challenges that you're not even aware of that are sitting there that are being triggered by um, the behavioral dynamic of the sex response. I, I would love to have that individual, whoever sent that in, to actually sit down and work with them and clear that out and take the time to go through methodically and everything else and see what happens. Because I've done it many, many times. And all of a sudden they go, now I'm performing. I said, well, that's because of your response, your psychological response, your perceptions. Let's clear them. Because there's probably nothing wrong with you. There's probably nothing wrong with your wife. But there's probably something that's imbalanced in the perceptions between the two. Fantastic. And, and for the audience member, Mark, uh, welcome oh, to come and join one, us. One more thing. Uh, you also want to make sure that if you're over, overweight and your estrogen levels are too high because of that, you also want to bring your, your weight down because that also can, can induce it. But that's usually a defense mechanism to those things I was talking about, those subtle challenges you're putting on weight to protect yourself. So pardon me for throwing that one into. Mm, no, it's, it's incredible value. Um, I'd just like to, at this stage, remind the audience that the offer is still open to the right-hand side. If you'd like to attend the Breakthrough Experience and, and have uh, these type of breakthroughs that uh, Dr. Demartini is talking about, uh, and or if you're suffering from any of these ailments or any area of your life that you need to have addressed, jump on that link, go through, um, and gain some extra clarity, vision on your mission and your goals, um, transform the emotions that are affecting your health and your vitality, uh, learn to work through any trauma, including the loss of a loved one, break through money, leadership, or business barriers to transform your life. And again, it's an extra 10% off the current advertised price uh, to attend the Breakthrough Experience. Plus, you get the Inspired Destiny online course worth $400. Um, so just click on the link. You'll see the flags to the right-hand side. The Demartini team is waiting for you. John, we've got another question here um, from Mark. What is the cause of extreme exhaustion in the afternoon? Well, the first thing I, I do when I have people that have, uh, you know, quite a bit of exhaustion in the afternoon is I first find out if they were fine during the morning, I first look at what they eat at lunch because the blood sugar can go up and they can go crashing. So if they overeat, overeating is like uh, trying to fight to gain peace kind of thing. Uh, overeating is not how you gain energy. Moderate to light eating it actually gives you more energy. It's overeating that tend to do it. So I'd look at what they're eating. I would look at that if it's within an hour, two hours or three hours because different materials are metabolized at different rates. I look at how quick the, the fall occurs because the blood sugar drops and they're irritable and they're really fatigued and they need one to go sleep. It's very possible that they've eaten things that they, they're reacting to and overeat. Uh, also, I want to look at if they're fine during the day and they love what they're doing and they're inspired in the morning uh, and they just hit that afternoon dip, it's probably blood sugar. And I would just look at what they're doing on their diet and look at what they're, they're doing. Or um, I, with a history, if I had the person here, I could ask the history. 
it could be that in the morning they do one thing in the afternoon, they're doing something that's not inspiring to them. Uh, because usually if you're doing something you can't wait to do and you're really inspired by it, um, that normalizes blood sugar pretty quickly. But if you're doing something you're not inspired by and you've overeaten because you're enga not engaged in your work, I would go through an exercise. First, I would moderate the diet and figure out what's going on with the diet. The second thing, I would go in there and link whatever you're doing in the afternoon to your highest values. I explained that in the breakthrough experience. Uh, you take because because whenever you're not inspired by your work and you're drained on energy, uh, it's because you're not seeing how what you're doing is the most meaningful thing you can be doing. Because if you're doing something really inspiring, you don't have it. I pe people say, you know, how do you go 14, 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day, every day, energized from morning to evening? And I and I, I have the energy level, and they go, how do you do that? And it's because whatever I'm doing is linked to my highest value, and I'm inspired to do that. So I don't have this, uh, you know, blah, down down uh, periods. Uh, so unless I was to go and overeat, which I don't do, I always say that. A lot of the behavior that we do, if you're really, really, really engaged in something you're doing, you eat to live. You don't live to eat. But if you're not engaged, you may be overeating and trying to get uh, fats, carbohydrates, and, and things that stimulate, particularly sugar, to compensate for it because you're unfulfilled and you want a high to compensate for the low that you're feeling. If you eat that way, we need to, we need to stop, regulate what's going on in the food. And we need to get you engaged by finding out how what you're doing is linked to highest values. And all of a sudden, you will, you will eat wiser. You will value yourself. Because when you know you have something extremely meaningful to do, you eat wisely to make sure you perform at your peak. And so I would look at what – I'd get the history of what you're eating. I'd get the history of – I'd be asking questions, how do you perceive your job, and make sure that that is engaged. And I have a system for that, a value structure, um, value application structure that I train people in corporations and people on how to do that. And in the breakthrough experience, I show you how to do that. So another reason for the breakthrough experience, but also um, another understanding of how your physiology is giving you feedback. Fantastic. We've got a question from Sajida. Thank you, Sajida. Hi, uh, Dr. Demartini. Please, can you discuss depression that keeps on reoccurring and is really holding me back in my life? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confront that because um, – I don't. I, I think depression is a is a comparison of our current reality to an unrealistic expectation, fantasy, or delusion we keep holding on to. So when I when I ask people what are they depressed about, somewhere online, uh, whoever just asked that question, please contact our office. Go online and go look and, and watch the video I have on depression. That's one because it's it's going to give you more than what I can say in just a couple of minutes here. If you're having depression, come to the breakthrough experience. Because I'm absolutely certain, I mean, we had too many, I mean, hundreds of people have been so-called depressed, and we showed them exactly what they're doing and why they're creating that outcome. And um, they, they, they clear that. It's not that difficult to clear. I, I'm amazed at how our society it just assumes biochemical imbalance, it's a disease. I don't believe that. I just think that's crap. I'm sorry, but I, I just think that's absolute crap, and it's, and it's actually misleading people all over the world. Depression is a comparison of your current reality to a fantasy that you are unconsciously running your life by. You're expecting something to occur that's not ever going to occur because you're expecting yourself to live out outside your highest values. You're expecting a one-sided world, not a two-sided world. You're expecting somebody else to live outside their values or to be one-sided. And then, then I, I guarantee in a matter of minutes, we could identify what that is. We could show you what to do. It's not that difficult. And I know that I get, I get attacked by by pharmaceutical promoters and and uh, people that want to say, no, I'm on a drug and I need that drug and everything else. And they're just, they're addicts. I think that that's just crazy because I've had people on the, in the program that say, well, I've been on medication for 11 years and, and I'm depressed and I'm and this and that. And I start going in there and we uncover what those things are. And I explain 15 most common ones in the program and the breakthrough experience, 15 most common reasons why people are depressed. And they just go tick, 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 tick. God, no wonder I'm there. And I say that depression isn't your enemy, it's your friend. It's trying to get you to break your addictions to fantasies about how life's supposed to be. And so I know this may be not what you want to hear, but I, I'm absolutely certain um, the breakthrough can help that. And it's work in some cases. It's not always just one. You might have a whole bunch of fantasies stacked up. I had a lady that came from the Ukraine that was down in South Africa who was attending the breakthrough experience. And she says, I met this man. He was my soulmate. She was infatuated. She was blind to the downsides. She left her country, came all the way down to South Africa, 
shot, oh my God, I'm going to be now finally in the, the life of my dreams. And she was a painter and she thought, oh, I'll do that. And he wanted a family and she got pregnant. She stopped doing her paintings. Uh, he was supposed to be paying for this. He eventually said, you need to take care of the kids. He turned out to be not what she thought. They had major battles. She stopped her career. She stopped her thing. She became dependent. And she held on to the fantasy that she was going to be this famous painter. And she had this, she realized that she was stuck in these traps. And I went in there and I go, well, okay, if you had not come to there, what would have been the drawback staying in Ukraine? And she goes, well, I would have been happy. And I go, no, 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 no. What would be the drawback? Because anytime you assume there's a pleasure without a pain, a happy without a sad, a positive without a negative, or any one-sided system, you got a delusion and fantasy. And I got to balance that fantasy and get grounded. Because you can't appreciate your life if you're comparing it to a fantasy. If you have a if you have a, a spouse and you're comparing them to a Chippendale or a Victoria's Secret model, you're thinking they should be that way. If they're not that way, there's something wrong. You're going to not appreciate what you got. And if you don't appreciate what you got, you're not going to get more to be appreciative of. So what I do is I go in there and I, we itemize exactly what those unrealistic expectations are. We uncover them and then we use the Demartini method to clear them. And all of a sudden your chemistry changes. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I'm not depressed now. And I, and I didn't take any medication. So... Pardon me for just being blunt about it, but that's I see it every week. Thank you, Sajida. And please send us a message at the Demartini Institute, uh, drdemartini.com. Uh, download and watch that video on depression. Uh, I've seen it myself. It's a fantastic video. Uh, the next question is from Newton. Uh, can you attend the Breakthrough Experience if you have uh, any health problems? So Newton has obviously got health problems at the moment, and he's concerned about attending the Breakthrough Experience with those conditions. Well, it depends on what the conditions are. If he has, uh, uh, I mean, I had a gentleman who had so-called chronic fatigue Epstein-Barr condition, and they wheeled him in Calgary, Canada. They wheeled him in the back of the room in a hospital bed with an IV. Now, that's a quite, quite crazy one. His wife came up to me and said, uh, I'm afraid he may not be able to stay awake. I hope he's not offending you in any way. I says, I'm going to offend me. And he says, if he can stay asleep through my program, that's I don't see that, but let's see what he does. Well, the guy stayed awake till two in the morning and, and he couldn't believe what he learned. And the following day, he did not come in in that bed. We broke through some major stuff in his chronic fatigue syndrome. What it, we found is that he was in a career and he uh, was a very high position CEO of a company. And all of a sudden, uh, the stock market went down in his industry and they got rid of him, not because really he did anything. It's just the industry cycle went on and they had to have the shareholders had to get rid of somebody to blame somebody instead of just realizing it's a cycle. And so they got rid of him and he was like distraught because it was his life's dream to be in running that company. And all of a sudden he had no control over it and he was depressed and he was comparing his current reality to that fantasy. Now, when he went to the medical doctor that he went to, uh, they found Epstein-Barr virus. And so they said, well, that's the cause. And I was amazed. Well, today he's back in another company. He's running a new company on his own because I turned that into on the way, not in the way. I turned that situation that he thought he was so terrible that he was holding on to a fantasy about his life and he felt his life was ending and he was depressed and down and fatigued. I turned it into an opportunity. Let's go out and start another company. You know how to run a company. Let's create one. And he did. And he's not in Epstein Barr condition. He's not chronic fatigue, et cetera. So that's a condition. So if a person has uh, most conditions, unless they're acute, uh, uh, something like, uh, you know, maybe a smallpox or, 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 you know, something that's, uh, you know, would be, would be so infectious disease of some form. I don't see any reason why you can't come. You, you would have to sit through the program. You'd have to stay awake. Um, and, but, but I've rarely ever seen anybody fall asleep in the breakthrough experience. They're, they're wide awake and going, they're learning too much. They're, they're, there's too much change in their life. But what you do is you, you come there. If you have any questions, contact us. We'll give you feedback. And if they have a question in my office, they'll contact me and I'll, I'll say, no, it shouldn't be a problem. I don't know if any too many problems have come in there. I've had people with all kinds of conditions, even under chemotherapy, coming in there with IVs um, to help transform their life. So I don't know of any reason other than an acute, infectious, um, epidemic kind of condition. Other than that, I don't know. Don't say have anything that would be a reason, no. Fantastic. So, John, we'll see you there, and uh, we, we expect you there. Uh, the next question is from Daniel. Uh, do you have a product where the Demartini method, uh, method is presented in details? Uh, that's great. I, I wish I'd give you the exact date. I think it's coming out. 
I'm a guest in September, October. If you contacted the South African office, um, you could get that estimated date when we're launching it. We are putting out a video on the method itself, the questions, exactly the method, etc. We have an audio cassette um, that you can also get. I think it's free online. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I did a live presentation. It was about an hour and a half long on the method and how I developed the method. And it's called Leaving Your Baggage Behind. So that one might be, I, I'm not sure, but it should be somehow on my website accessible. Um, but if not, contact the office and go on where it says help on the, the little far right side. Hit help, and one of my uh, people will be able to type in what to do and how to get a hold of it. That's the first start. When the new product comes out, get the video because I'm going through each column, each question, explaining why and what I'm doing with it, et cetera, and um, very powerful. I'm absolutely certain the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask. It, it makes a difference to know the right questions. And you, once you have them, they got them for life. So the method is something you – once you learn how to do it, you'll use it over again from anytime you're under stress situations. It, it, it'll be used. I've, I've, been, I've been teaching that for over three decades now, and, and – it, it's useful. I, I, the, the grief process in the breakthrough experience is so mind blowing. Uh, people, it's hard for them to comprehend it. We take people that have been in grief over deaths and things like that, and we dissolve it. And I've been doing that since 1986, and um, no one believes it was possible. It's possible. I do it. I guarantee it. I mean, I get money back guarantee on that one. I, I've not failed once since 1986. And we do it each week in the breakthrough experience. So that is a very powerful tool. And that's because the right questions and the right paradigm. And I've been studying the brain and psychology and this, this area and physiology all these years, 45 years almost. And um, there's, some, uh, there's innovative and creative new information. It's not, you won't be able to see it anywhere else. This is it. And I, I mean that you can hold me to it. I ask people at the end of the breakthrough experience, how many of you uh, learned something this weekend that you, you've, you probably would never learn the rest of your life? And they all, every hand goes up and they go, yep. Because they, they, they're going to learn something, a new paradigm for them. And we, it's time for a new paradigm. And somebody's got to stand up and give a new paradigm when it comes to physiology and psychology. Fantastic, John. And thank you very much. I just want to shout out to the audience. We're going to take one uh, last question. Uh, we'll see if any more come through. But that offer is still available for the next two hours. So please click through. Um, we'd love to see you at the Breakthrough Experiences. You can get a lot of these issues resolved and, and really practice this method and apply this method. I think that's the real power of it. It's not something that you just learn. It's something you apply and work through. And at the end of the weekend, you actually have your result. And I think that's the profound thing. You're not paying to attend a course. You're paying to resolve the issue that you've been struggling with. That is the breakthrough. And, and that's why I personally would recommend this to, to anyone. Um, so the next question we've got here is from Aksana. Um, beautiful name. I have a, a question about cholesterol. I'm just 25 years old and I've been extremely high cholesterol levels. I'm not quite sure what it says about my perceptions or where I could start looking. That's from Oksana. I had a woman who is 72 years old that came in my office many years ago uh, that her physician told her that she was a time bomb and, and a stroke waiting to happen. And she had hypertension, hyperlipidemia, hypercholesterolemia. And um, she was, yeah, she was, she was a time bomb. And because she had been a patient of mine years earlier for another issue, she came in and asked me if I thought I could help that. And I said, well, let's, let's see, what are you doing right now? What is the, well, I was on mex, uh, medic, medication and I'm trying to do nutritional things. And she's going to a nutritionist that I knew that was excellent. So she was doing all that. I said, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you um, to write down all of the resentments that you can think of because you're, your lipids, your, your, your blood pressure goes up and cause turbulence in the blood vessels that constrict, except in certain areas of the body, uh, when you're under high resentment state. I mean, almost everybody who's been really angry and raged and, and, and things, you can feel the blood pressure go up and you can feel the turbulence inside the heart. Sometimes you even have arrhythmias and things. And uh, so what happens is we had to make her list uh, on, on the things that she was influenced on. We found out that she'd been married three men, three husbands. Uh, she's working for a gentleman who is a head of a, a religious organization, big one, one of the famous ones in America. Uh, she's got a, a, a homosexual son that she was loving, but also because she came from old school, she wasn't honoring homosexuality day and, and the, the, the reality of that and the normality of that. 
but she was basically still judging that because she was religiously inclined and they had a charge on homosexuality for some crazy reason. And uh, even though that's where most of it is, in fact, we find, but um, she was charged on that. She was charged on her boss. She had charge on three husbands and charge on her current boyfriend. So I took her through the Demartini method and uh, the first husband and did everything I could in the time we had and then told her to go home and start working on the next one and then come back next week and we're going to finish that one. And we go each week, we'll do that. And over a six week period, we did seven people, cleared that until there was nothing there except grace, gratitude for all of those. I mean, just cleared all of the major charges on males that she had. And there was, there was a big, strong one. She went back to her physician and he was blown away. He was just astonished. He goes, I don't know what you did. I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't see this, but everything's normalized. Her Oh, she also had anemia. That's what gave it away. So I would ask if you have any history of your blood, your CBC, I'd like to see if it, you've got any R RBC alterations because the red blood cells deal with the oxidation during the day, which deals with testosterone, deals with males. The white blood cells deal with nurturing, protection and repair. That's the female side. Hyperlipidemia uh, very commonly is the female upset with males. So I'd go through there and clear out uh, all the charges you might have with male sides and just see what happens uh, doing the Demartini method. Because if you've tried all these other things and you're trying to avoid having to do a, 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 just a medication to try to do it, do that exercise. And you just might surprise yourself. Um, but I would I need to ask the questions. That's why I, in the breaks, I either do it or one-on-ones. Usually I do those one-on-ones. I try to go in and pin down what those things are because in the breaks, sometimes people have very complex systems. And because I, I may not be able to get down into their system and have the time for that system. So if I can do it and I give them a generic, that's great. But sometimes I need to go specific. And so I need to go ask the right questions to get down to what exactly is the charges that are underlying this. Because you don't just have hyperlipidemia for no reason. There's a reason. We need to find it. And uh, by attending the Breakthrough Experience, I'm sure a lot of these people will be able to find find these reasons. John, just in closing, uh, and I think I'd like to reiterate for the audience, the offer is available. And the Breakthrough Experience is not just for, for health benefits, but we, like we said, it does. We do tackle a lot of other issues in the Breakthrough Experience. Uh, so if you want to resolve any relationship issues, money issues, leadership issues, uh, grief issues, um, interrelationship issues, work issues. So although for the, the topic of this webinar, we've focused on the mind-body connection. Uh, for the, the balance of the audience, if you're not struggling with any health or, or body ailments of any kind, please understand that this also will help you to elevate. If, if, even if you're on the top of your game and you feel on the top of the world, I can promise you now there's a lot of improvement. And I know, John, uh, you study every day and you're constantly improving, so you can never really achieve enough. Is there any closing words that you could leave? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, you're never done. I, I've, had, I've had people come to the Breakthrough Experience who have very successful companies, uh, but are in a plateau. They're, they're doing extremely well, but they want to take and do even a bigger game. And so a plateau very commonly in business is an unclarity of the next step in the vision. And so the executive center, when because of the way our brain is set up, when we're doing our highest priority actions, our executive center gets blood glucose and oxygen and we see inspired visions, we see strategies, we want to execute them and we have self-governance. So uh, in the breakthrough experience, I can show people how to wake that up and all of a sudden they see right past their obstacle and they know what to do. So people come in there for business development. Some people go in there for conflict resolution. Some people go in there because they want to take their leadership levels to new levels. Uh, some people because it comes to health issues. I don't know what they're going to be involved in. I, every week is different even though there's sometimes there's themes that show up in different weeks for some reason. I can't say why, but there's a health, a lot of people with health issues or a lot of people with business issues, or a lot of people with wealth issues. And so we go off on those more, even though I cover all seven uh, and I show what you can do in each of these areas, uh, health being one of them for sure, but um, it, it depends on the group. And so if I find that there's a whole lot of people that need business savvy, we go off on business and strategies on what to do to grow business and break through business uh, blocks and, how to build businesses and things. Sometimes we go into finance. Yes, this last weekend, we did a lot on finance, quite a bit, because people in the group were either having challenges with finances, were not uh, able to get ahead, or were needing help on, on investments and things of this nature. So we went there. So I don't know. We have a, There's a segment in the Breakthrough Experience 
where we just do Q&A and anything goes. Anything that can help somebody get to the next level, we're, we're interested. Because I want people to empower their lives in whatever area. So I'm going to have generic information that's going to be there to, that we can break through stuff and tools. But then we go to specifics and individuals. So there's a, there, I tell people, any question you have at any time during the break to write it down or ask it. If I defer it, I will ask, answer it before the end of the program. And we don't let any questions go uncovered. We, we address them all. And I don't know what it's going to be. It could be health issues. And we sometimes, we've had people with health issues. We had an MS patient one time right there in the seminar. And we actually did something right there. And believe it or not, they are right now not having the symptoms of MS. So I don't know what I'm going to run into in the break. So I just know that it's a very inspiring experience for people. So it sounds like you're just as excited to attend the breakthrough experiences the the audience should be, John. Well, I've done it 1,109 <laughs> times. I told you something. <laughs> Well, I think the test, the, the audience and the, the things that you learn and engaging with people is fantastic. So I'd like to encourage everybody, we're going to be closing off the, the webinar now in a few minutes. So um, I will let John close off with his last few words. But please click through on the link. Um, as I said, there's the various countries, UK, USA, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. Go and take a look at those dates. Clear your schedule for that weekend. Uh, there's nothing more important that you can do over that weekend. If you're having these challenges, if you want to gain clarity, you want to increase your drive, focus, um, any of the things that we've spoken about for this, this last almost two hours now, this is the place to go. So, John, do you have any words in closing that you can leave us with the audience? This has been exceptionally inspiring for me, and I always listen to these afterwards and jot my own notes. So is there anything you would like to leave as a last bit of information? Well, if, if the people who are listening to this could see what I see on a weekly basis, um, they would be inspired on knowing the power they have within themselves to do something extraordinary. Uh, I've been blessed to see over all these years people with just about every health condition um, transform their life. Now that doesn't mean that it's a cure all. It doesn't mean it's, I don't even like the word cure. In fact, I think it's antiquated. It's a, um, it's just, there, there's some things that a person can do that can help them master life. And I believe that their body is doing what they can to try to help them do it. And so the, the, the tools that they can learn at the breakthrough experience or in these, these webinars, I, I believe that if they will listen to them and apply them and come and learn them, um, they're going to have an advantage over people that don't get it. I mean, uh, that's why I want whoever's listening, if you've got something out of this and you felt that you, you were thinking in your mind, God, I know some people that that I wish they could have heard that, please let them know. Because I can't help somebody that doesn't even, I don't get to reach. I can only help people that that it reaches. So if you can help me help other people, if you feel that this was helpful to you, and if you believe that the breakthrough experience will help them too, please pass the torch because uh, it's nothing more inspiring, nothing more inspiring to me than to watch the lives change that I see every week. And I think that that's the gift. And I believe that everybody, whatever their career is, whatever it may be, deserves to have a career that is meaningful to them. If, if you come here into the breakthrough experience and just, uh, there, there was a lady the other day in the program that was sitting there in a job that was not inspiring and was pretending she, she was trapped in that. And I found out what her highest value is. I found out what it is that she really has got inspiration to do. And we showed her how to get there. And it was such a difference in her physiology, her energy levels, her, her clarity, her face, her smile, her chain, her light. She saw it. She saw how she was going to do it and what she was going to do. Man, that is very powerful and very meaningful. So if you, if you're sitting there, if you already have empowerment in all areas and you feel inspired and you you don't feel like you've got anything you need and you 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 feel like you're you know you're, you're inspired person, then then fabulous. You may be one of those few people that don't have a need for something like that. But if you know that you have some area of your life that you know you want to grow, then I'm certain that the the breakthrough experience and the method and these these programs can help you. So um, please take advantage of that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing the message with people who you feel would benefit from it. And all I can say is go and apply it. And if we can help you at the Martini Institute, there's a little help button on our website. My daughter and all the people we have helping us, they all go and try to help uh, answer questions and solve problems. Um, but come to the Breakthrough Experience. You'll, you will say thank you. I promise you a new paradigm. It's not like people always say, well, is it like this? Is it like that? It's not. 
I'm a unique guy. I've been working on this for 45 years. You're going to get some original information. So come, please. It'll help you. Thank you, John. And it's been an absolute pleasure, as always, to be able to spend this time with you. Um, I always learn, I think, incredible amounts through the, through these sessions. And I would like to, from my side, just say to people to take that step of action, uh, for lack of a better word, take that step of faith and attend the Breakthrough Experience. Um, it's a phenomenal amount of work and research and studying, passion and heart that has gone into these programs with a true sincerity and absolute intention to help you move from where you are are currently stuck or feeling uh, despondent or suppressed to a whole new state and a whole new reality. And I can vouch for that personally. So I'd love to have as many of the audience jump onto the opportunity. The link is on the right-hand side. The Demartini team is waiting and excited to meet you uh, at the Breakthrough Experience, as is John. So thank you very much for this webinar. Uh, we'll be closing off. Have a wonderful evening, good morning, or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you.